What about the origin of the universe? Here he says that the universe doesn't need to begin to exist because we know in mathematics how to deal with infinities, for example, how to sum infinities. Well, of course in mathematics you can do that. Mathematics has certain conventions and rules that you use but to prevent contradictions from occurring. For example, in transfinite arithmetic, the inverse operations of subtraction and division are prohibited because they lead to contradictions. But while you can slap the hand of the mathematician who tries to break the rules, if you've got, say, an infinite number of baseball cards, you can't stop for someone from giving away part of the cards. And so you will have contradictions when you translate it into reality. It may be possible on paper in the realm of mathematics, but it's not possible in the realm of reality. And lest you think that this is not reasoning that impresses contemporary scientists, let me quote from George Ellis, a great cosmologist, when he asked, can there be an infinite set of really existing universes? He says, we suggest on the basis of well-known philosophical arguments that the answer is no, and therefore they reject a realized past infinity in time. Now what about the Big Bang confirmation? Dr. Bo uh, Dr. Price appeals to Stephen Hawking's model. Hawking's model involves an absolute beginning of the universe. It has a beginning of the, of the universe, though it doesn't have a beginning point of infinite density. He says, but it can come into being out of nothingness because nothing is unstable. This is the grossly misleading use of nothingness for describing the quantum vacuum, which is empty space filled with vacuum energy. It is a rich physical reality described by physical laws and having a physical structure. If a religious person were to so seriously misrepresent a scientific theory as this, he would be accused of deliberate distortion and abuse of science, and I think rightly so. What the quantum vacuum is, is a roiling sea of energy. It is not nothing. As Dr. Uh, uh, Krauss himself has said, and I quote, by nothing, I don't mean nothing. Nothing isn't nothing anymore in physics. Empty space is not empty. Nothing is really a bubbling, boiling brew of virtual particles. And my point is that that quantum vacuum state cannot be eternal in the past. That was the implication of the bohr guth vilenkin theorem. Listen to what Vilenkin writes. He, said, he, he says, it is said that an argument is what convinces reasonable men, and a proof is what it takes to convince even an unreasonable man. With the proof now in place, cosmologists can no longer hide behind the possibility of a past eternal universe. They have to face the problem of a cosmic beginning. And given the absolute beginning of the universe, the beginning of the quantum vacuum, uh, God's existence is obviously more probable than it would have been without it. What about the origin of the universe? Here he accuses me of using God of the gaps reasoning, says we should simply say we don't understand, we should continue to investigate rather than appeal to God. Now it's very important that you understand tonight that I am not using science to prove God. I'm using science as evidence that the universe began to exist. That is a religiously neutral statement that can be found in any textbook on astronomy and astrophysics. Beyond that, I'm making the extra scientific philosophical claim that God's existence is more probable given the beginning of the universe than it would have been without it. So the question is, does the scientific evidence support the beginning of the universe? Well, the Lord Guth Vilenkin theorem requires it. Vilenkin says the remarkable thing about this theorem is its sweeping generality. We did not even assume that gravity is described by Einstein's equations. The only assumption we made was that the expansion rate of the universe never gets below some non-zero value. This assumption should certainly be satisfied in the inflating false vacuum. The conclusion is that past eternal inflation without a beginning is impossible. So we have both philosophical grounds as well as scientific grounds for affirming the beginning of the universe. Now, Dr. Uh, Krauss says, but the um, Hawking model from quantum tunneling involves a different concept of nothing. Uh, there is no classical time and space in the point from which the universe originates. But it is still something. 
And Vilenkin, who also has a quantum tunneling model, recognizes this. Vilenkin says the initial state from which the universe evolves is not nothing. I understand that a universe of zero radius is not necessarily the same thing as no universe at all. There is a three geometry that evolves uh, through quantum tunneling into our space time. It's not nothing. James Sinclair, a cosmologist, says this approach still does not solve the problem of creation. Rather, it has moved the question back one step to the initial tiny closed and metastable universe. This universe state can have existed for only a finite time. Where did it come from? Why is Dr. Krauss so insistent on denying the scientific evidence points to the beginning of the universe? That's not a supernatural conclusion. That doesn't imply the existence of God in and of itself. If we follow the scientific evidence where it leads, all of the evidence that I'm aware of points to the fact that the universe is not past eternal. If we have any evidence that the universe is past eternal, I'd love to hear Dr. Krauss present it. I'm not aware that there's any evidence that suggests the universe is past eternal. As I said, the uh, attempts to avoid the born guth Lincoln theorem all involve exotic, uh, implausible models, which in the end fail to restore an eternal past. They just push the beginning back a step. So we've got good philosophical and scientific grounds for thinking the universe began to exist. And since something can't come out of nothing, and I hear I mean non-being, then there must be a transcendent cause to bring the universe into existence, which I think makes God's existence more probable. So we saw that while the infinite is a useful mathematical concept, when you try to translate it into the real world, it results in self-contradictory situations. And therefore, the past must be finite. And we saw, secondly, that this is indeed what science has confirmed. The bohr guth vilenkin theorem shows that the quantum vacuum out of which our material state has evolved uh, cannot be eternal in the past, but must have had a beginning. The hartle hawking model itself that Dr. Krauss has appealed to involves an absolute beginning of the universe. He says, however, that this universe explains how it came into existence from absolute non-being. And I contradicted that by saying that the point from which the universe quantum tunnels is not nothing on these models. Listen to what Hartle and Hawking write in their scholarly article on this. They say the volume vanishes at the north and south poles, even though these are perfectly regular points of the four geometry. One therefore would not expect the wave function to vanish at the vanishing three volume. In the case of the universe, we would interpret the fact that the wave function can be finite and non-zero at the zero three geometry as allowing topological fluctuations of the three geometry. So they're, they're clearly not talking about something coming from nothing. Indeed, I mean, think about it, folks. There is no physics of non-being. That's absurd. There's only a physics of things that exist that are real. So it's impossible for physics to explain how being could arise from non-being. There is no physics of non-being. And therefore, given that the universe did have an absolute beginning, I think it fairly cries out for the existence of a transcendent cause of the universe, which is most plausibly identified as God rather than some abstract object.